we're excited to hear from you. And so, ladies, ladies and the few gentlemen here, welcome to the stage, Heidi Reisner. Oh, y'all are too sweet. Okay, hold on a second. Can I get situated here just for a second? You know what? Look, I'm going to do this. One, one second. Visit among your table for one second. Good. How are y'all? Happy 2021 to everybody. And on the last day of 2020, everybody said yes and amen, and let's set our face forward and get ourselves the heck out of this. I'm glad to, I'm glad to see y'all tonight. Um, how many of y'all? Y'all look awesome, like really awesome. Um, how many of y'all were here last year? Good, awesome. How many of y'all were not here last year? Whoa, well, we nice. missed y'all terribly. We're glad that y'all came along for the party this time. And um, again, like she said, my name is Heidi Reisner, and just so, so grateful to be here, so thankful. Uh, I'm going to introduce a couple of the girls. Uh, I brought three girls with me this trip. Um, we're going to pray before we start. I know we've already played worship. Didn't the worship team do an awesome job? Can y'all give them a great hand clap? Awesome. Like, really, really great. And uh, let me introduce you, Elizabeth. She can stand up and wave. She is our assistant, does an awesome job. Elizabeth <laughs> is precious, so y'all love on her. And then I brought my two, Elizabeth's like a daughter, but I brought my two daughter daughters, and uh, the oldest one is Hillary, and then Hannah uh, is our second child. We have William, a third child, and we left him at home. So, <laughs> girls, if y'all want to stand up and give everybody a little wave, and yeah, they love that. So y'all make sure you introduce yourself, say hello to them. And so I'm so glad that they're here. And then Rebecca, thank y'all. Thank y'all for having me back. Rebecca and her team, don't they do a great job just putting all this together? Just thank y'all. Um, I, I don't know if I gave them a little bit of a heart attack. Things were going very smoothly today, traveling, you know, airplanes and all the such, getting from Louisiana until about two, year, uh, t about two hours ago. And then the wheels fell off a little bit. So we came in, you know, uh, like a house on fire. So <laughs> literally like a house on fire. And, but we made it, and we're glad to be here. And I also want to welcome, we have a lot of girls that are online watching. So that's awesome. Can y'all give them a big hand clap and a welcome to them as well? So if y'all are watching from online, we just want to say welcome. And we're glad you're with us, and thank God for technology. And uh, so glad that you guys turned, uh, tuned in. And let me, let me ask you, we're going to pray, and then we're going to jump in. Is that fine? Um, last year, those of you who said you were here last year, if you remember, we were here and the, the theme was, uh, abide in me, in him, abide in me. It was John chapter 15. We talked, remember we talked about vineyards mm -hmm. and we talked about all the stuff through John chapter 15 and it was awesome and it was wonderful and we loved our time together. If God had told us last year as we're tiptoeing through the vineyard of John chapter 15 and talking about staying closely connected to him. Okay, that's not a coincidence. You do realize that now, don't you? If God had told us a year ago what this brand new year called 2020 was going to look like, how many of y'all would not have signed up for it? If we had known, and sometimes we get so aggravated with God in our prayers and what we ask of him because we want him to lay it all out. And I don't know what the future is. And God, give me A, B, C, and D. Give me the next 10 steps. 2020 is a perfect example as to why God doesn't give us the next 10 steps. Because we couldn't handle it. That's why we need faith. That's why it's called faith. If God had told us last year at this time, y'all better buckle up and hang on, girls, because you're about to go through a year like you've never seen before. We would have all signed out, driven ourselves off the cliff, said, God, just go ahead and take me on home to glory, and we're done with this. 
That's why the word of God promises that his mercies and his grace are new every morning. And then he just promises us one day at a time. And then as we look back at last year's conference, the abide in him, I don't know if there's ever been a year that we've ever needed to stay as closely connected to him as it's been this last year. Is it just me or did y'all have a great year? Did y'all have like this awesome, like was 2020 y'all's favorite year ever? Okay, how many of y'all be really, really honest and go, you know what, Heidi? 2020 was a hard year. It was a hard year. It's a hard year in different ways and different facets, but by the grace of God, guess what? The calendar turned, and here we are. I read in Revelation that this is not even the message, so this is like just not some free stuff I'm throwing at you. <laughs> but I, I was reading today in my Bible. I read my Bible. Um, I hope y'all read y'all's Bible. And just, it happened to be on my, my next reading, you know, I check off reading through a year or whatever, and somehow I'm in Revelation. I was, I'm either ahead or a little bit behind. I don't know where I was. But I was reading in Revelation this morning, and the very first couple of chapters of Revelation talks about what John saw in Jesus. And I, I really could cry about it because it was so powerful and so, so magnificent. And he talked about just the, the majesty of who he saw Jesus to be. And Jesus in this thundering voice, we always think of Jesus as just this pitiful little picture that we see hanging, you know, in the bookstore. Jesus isn't pitiful. And just this, this, this bolstering voice coming out of him, and he says this, I am the first, and I'm the last. I'm the alpha, I'm the omega. I, I am who I am, that I am the first, and I'm the last, and I am he who is to come. And that there's nowhere we can go that he's not already there. And there's nothing we can go through that he hasn't already walked before us. And there's nothing that's going to happen even in a year 2021. And we don't know what's going to happen. We're hoping for better days ahead. But whatever is ahead of us, girls, and we're going to talk about that uh, tonight. He's already there ahead of us. And he's already given us what we need to walk through whatever this year may hold for us. Aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you so thankful? So I just want us to do this. I don't know. Are we holding hands? Are we breathing on one another? I don't know. Just don't breathe on one another. I don't even know. Can you elbow one another? Can you grab somebody's hand? Can you just wave to them? I just like your table people. I don't know what y'all are doing. But if you're holding hands, just don't put it near your mouth and all that. I mean, you don't even know what to do anymore. I'm not making fun either. My husband and I had COVID. It is no joke. We were very, very sick for two weeks. So I'm not making fun at all. It's just the time that we live in now, you don't even really don't even know what to do. So just be careful and wash your hands, and I mean that. But let's just pray. The Holy Spirit is already so, so real and so present. But I want to encourage, and we're going to pray at the end. This is not even a message, but we're going to pray at the end, and you're going to leave here so encouraged. We're going to, we're going to turn our face away from whatever we had to walk through last year. And we're going to lay it down, and we're going to face our eyes forward on what's ahead. And as uncertain as it may seem, there's good in it because he's already there. And we're just going to pray. And there's just, I just felt that in worship today, that there's just some of us in here that need to just let whatever all that was, we're just going to let it go. And we're going to lay it at his feet. And we're going to face our eyes forward. Can we do that? Jesus, I thank you for your presence that's already here today. I thank you for every woman that's in this room. God, you know what she had to go through to get here. God, you know what the team had to go through to prepare this. God, you know every obstacle, every hindrance, every demonic attack that was coming against this very event, God. But they made it. And you've gathered us here for a purpose, just like you gathered us last year, us having no idea what we were about to face. So, Father, I pray for your women that are in this room, your daughters, that, God, we would fix our eyes forward, as the Apostle Paul says. That we would forget what is behind. That we would take the lessons that we've learned. That we would take the faith that was grown. 
that we would take the hope and, and all that you taught us last year, God, and that, God, we would lay that at your feet and that we would fix our eyes forward, Jesus. And whatever this new year holds for us and whatever it may entail and whatever uncertainty we may be walking into, God, we know there's going to be good in it because you're there and you're a good God and you're going to give us the strength and the power and the might to walk forward into all that you've called us to be. I pray that you would come and anoint your words tonight, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Do y'all believe that to be true? Good. Okay, I want y'all to uh, already welcomed everybody. Good. Everybody's welcome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start... I'm going to do like a part one and a part two. I'm coming back in the morning. I didn't know if y'all knew that. And after tonight, maybe I shouldn't have told y'all that. You may not want to know that. But I'm going to do tonight. And by the grace of God, we'll be back here in the morning. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do kind of a two-part uh, message because I'm going to tie it all together. But I'm going to talk about becoming a woman of dignity. And I love y'all's theme. I'm, I am all about it. And I will tell y'all I, I am loving. And I loved last year, too. But, but this year, strength and dignity. If there ever was a time in our world and our culture that we needed women to walk in the strength and the dignity that God created us to walk in, it is now. Is that true? And so, um, so I'm going to kind of hit part one to, to tonight. And then in the morning, I'll come back and we'll, and we'll hit a part two. Is that good? Y'all have got notes on your table, which is awesome. Those pens write so good. I picked one up and wrote like a little note to myself on my pen and went, okay, these are like gliding. These are like awesome pens. So make sure you use those groovy, awesome pens on your table. And then you've got paper there to take notes because I'm going to give you some good notes because um, I want you to re remember this, take this with you. So we're going to go to Proverbs 31. Surprise, surprise. We're going to go to Proverbs 31, and I'm going to read you some passages. And then I'm going to talk to you about Proverbs 31. Then I'm going to go back to about three verses, and we're going to really dissect those. And prayerfully, you're going to leave here so encouraged, so empowered, so hopeful for whatever lies ahead for us. Proverbs 31. Let me read this, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to read, and they're going to put it on the screen. I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. But I don't want you throwing things. I don't want you booing. I don't want you ripping the pages out of your Bible. Okay? Because this is what happens with Proverbs 31. It can be used as a standard that no human being could ever accomplish. And if truth be told, on the days that were not quite so godly, you want to sneak into your room and rip those pages out of your Bible and act like they never even were in there. Am I the only one? And so we're going to talk about this and bring that standard. It is a great standard, but I'm going to give you some context of it to where you're going to be encouraged to read Proverbs 31 instead of reading it and going, okay, I'm nowhere near that, so forget that. Good for her, more power to her, happy for her. But I'm never going to be that. We're, not going to, we're, not, we're going to look at it a different way tonight to where you're not going to dread reading Proverbs 31. So we're going to go Proverbs 31, just the first three verses, and then we're going to jump down to 10. Again, this is a Passion Translation, and this is what it says. Okay, stop. I haven't even started yet. Proverbs, the whole book of Proverbs is written by King Solomon. Solomon was one of David's son, sons, the, the wisest, excuse me, the wisest man in all the world. So the whole book of Proverbs is written just with wisdom over and over and over from the wisest man who ever lived. So we come to chapter 31, and Solomon is not writing chapter 31. A king, King Lemuel, is writing Psalms 31. And this is what he says. King Lemuel's royal words of wisdom. These are the inspired words my mother taught me. And this is what she told him. Listen, my dear son, son of my womb. You are the answer to my prayers, my son. Keep yourself sexually pure from the promiscuous wayward woman. Don't waste the strength of your anointing on those who ruins, who ruins kings or you will live to regret it. So she's given him some advice and some wisdom and who to stay away from. And then we're going to go over to uh, verse 10. And these are the, these are the, the, the verses that you're going to be familiar with. And this is, again, his mother speaking to him. Who could ever find a wife like this one? 
She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. She is full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels. Her husband has entrusted his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. All throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the works of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She's like a trading ship bringing divine uh, supplies from the merchant. Even at night she rises and she sets the table in the middle of the night full of food for the hungry ones in her house and for others. She sets her heart upon a nation and takes it as her own, carrying it within her. She labors and she plants vines and she wraps herself in strength and might and power. She tastes and experiences a better substance. Her shining light shall not be extinguished no matter how dark it is. She stretches her hands to help the needy and she lays hold of the wheels of government. She is known for her extravagant generosity to the poor. She's always reaching her out, her hand out to those in need. Okay, you hate her yet? Let's keep going. <laughs> Verse 21. No, she's not afraid of tribulation. She's not afraid of 2020. She's not afraid of a pandemic. She's going to face it straight on. For all her household is covered in dual garments, because she's made the garments for them, of righteousness and grace, and her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite uh, linen. Her husband is famous, bless his heart, and admired by all, and he's sitting as judge as the people, uh, at, the, at the feet of the people. Even in her work of righteousness, she does the benefit. She benefits for her enemy. She's bold with power and glorious majesty is wrapped around her. It doesn't people, don't they say that about you? Bow power and glorious majesty is wrapped around us. Says it all the time. She laughs with joy over the latter days. Her teachings are filled with wisdom. Oh, she's a teacher too. And she's filled with wisdom and kindness and loving instruction pours from her lips. She watches well over the ways of her household and meets every single need they have. Can, is there anything this woman cannot do? Her sons and daughters arise. And her husband arise to speak of her in glowing terms. <laughs> Did your children and husband speak of you in glowing terms as you walked out the door tonight? <laughs> oh, my goodness, I've lost my place. I'm so wrapped up in her. Okay, glowing terms. There we are, 29. There are many. Oh, it keeps going. There are many valiant and noble ones. But you, mighty Proverbs 31 woman, have ascended them all. Charm can be misleading and beauty is vain and fades so quickly. But this virtuous woman lives in wonder and awe, and she fears the Lord. She is praised throughout eternity. So go ahead, people of God, and give her the credit that is due. For she has become a radiant woman. All her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateways of every city. And all the people said, yes and amen. And we are worn out talking about how wonderful this woman is. Now, I'm not making fun. It's God's word. I'm certainly not making fun. But let me give you some context. Because if you're just reading that, you're reading this, and if you're honest. Now, if you're religious and aren't going to be honest, then that's one thing. We can't talk to you. But if you're going to be honest, we're going to read that in our heart and go, Are you stinking kidding me? What in the world? Who is this woman, this superhero woman? And again, throughout the years, I was raised in church, gave my heart to God when I was six years old, was raised in church, have walked with the Lord all these years. And many, many times these verses are put up, again, like a standard without a whole lot of explanation and without a whole lot of context. And you just go, man, I'm not going to even try to shoot for that because I'm going to fall so short. Because I've, I don't know anybody in the whole world that could do that. And again, I'm not making fun. I'm just bringing some laughter to it because I know what you're thinking. So don't look at me like you don't think that. I know what you're thinking when we read these verses. But let me give you some context. First of all, like I said, it was spoken from a mother to her son. A mother was speaking to her son. Nowhere else in the Bible does God so beautifully and detailed Lay out what a woman of dignity looks like. You can't find verses like this in any of the rest of the Bible describing a man, though there's verses that will describe men. Nothing goes into the detail of what Proverbs 31 does. And you know why? Because it's a mama talking. 
It's a woman talking. Women want details. So we don't want just the headline. So a mama's going to come in and talk to her son and go, when you're looking for a wife, this is the kind of wife you need to look for. And she goes into extravagant detail over what this woman ought to look like and be like. What I find so awesome is that God chose the words, because the Bible is inspired by God, inspired by the, written by men, inspired by the Holy Spirit, but he chose a mother speaking to her son, because this is what I know about women, because I am one and I know, just trust me. Women can fool men, yes or no? Thank you. Women can fool men. Women can even fool other women at times. Yes or no? Okay. At times, women can fool other women. But what a woman cannot do, she cannot fool a mama. And especially a mama of sons. So if you're a mama of sons, and he's bringing his little sweet, girlfriend in she's gonna try to put on the dog and try to do everything she can but mama cannot be fooled a woman cannot fool a mama so that I I find that so interesting that God chooses his mother's words to go okay let's just get raw and real and let's just lay this out this is what you're looking for and the poor king probably heard his mama say that and go okay just forget it I'm never going to find a woman like that which was probably her purpose in the first place (laughs) to make it so grandiose that he just goes okay just forget it but when I began to understand the context of this, and I began to study Proverbs 31, which I have for years now because I'm just going, there's got to be something in here, something good in here that I can get and not be so discouraged. And I just kept studying and studying it because I didn't know how to be a godly wife when I got married. I didn't know how to be a godly woman and how to lead women, and I, I just didn't know what I was doing. So I'm going, surely God's Word has something to say about it. So I land on Proverbs 31. Again, my first instinct is rip all the pages out the Bible, we're done. But then, as I matured and grown, then I go back and I really start studying these verses and look at it and go, Proverbs 31 isn't a quick fix. This isn't an infomercial at midnight. And if you'll call this number right now, you'll get not one but two or ten of the slice and dice and knives. That's not what Proverbs 31 is. Proverbs 31 isn't a prescription to go, if you'll do A, B, C, and D, then you're going to be like this woman and your whole world's going to fall into place and everyone's going to sing your praises and your children are just going to adore you and your husband is going to think you're the most wonderful thing in the world if you'll just do A, B, C, and D. That's not what Proverbs 31 is. Proverbs 31 is a lifelong journey with God throughout your life and at the end of your life walking with God this is the way I see it if one or two or three of those things can be said about me at the end of my life then I'll feel like I've done pretty good I'm not going to put this unreal and we're going to talk about that tomorrow I'm not going to put this unrealistic expectation on myself to where I know I'm going to keep falling short and falling short and falling short. Because I'm not so enclosed for my kids. Y'all understand? Now, some of y'all may. And some of you may spin wool and all that, and I want to shake your hand. You're awesome. I can't do any of that. But there's a few things in here that I can do. And at the end of my life, a few of these things are said about I mean, we're going to talk about a few of those today that are very realistic and very doable to be able to form in us the character of Christ so that the people around us will see something different in us. Proverbs 31 is simply gives us a picture of what wisdom, remember the whole book of Proverbs is wisdom. Proverbs 31 gives us a picture, an actual visual of what wisdom looks like in action. So when you go back and read those verses again, go, you know what, this woman had some sense to her. 
She had some wisdom to her, and she didn't just carry her wisdom. She put it into action, and when she put wisdom into action, other people began taking note. Does that make sense? So we're going to go back, Proverbs 31.10, and I read, this, I read this as well ago, and it says that she is a woman of strength and mighty val- valor. Other translations will use the word virtuous, and you've heard that if you've been in the church world or read your Bible very much at all in other translations, you're, you will remember that word virtuous, a virtuous woman. That's what Proverbs 31 is. Let me give you a definition of virtuous. This is why you need your notepads. Virtuous means this. You hear the word virtuous and you kind of think one thing and then when you get the real meaning of it, it paints a whole totally different picture because this is the meaning of the word virtuous. The word virtuous means this, strength, able, might, and power. Is is that on our screen? Do you all see that? Or maybe it's somewhere. You can just write it down. Just trust me. (laughs) Strength, able, might and power the word virtuous the hebrew word for virtuous is the same word that they would use to describe men of war in the old testament it's the same word virtuous that hebrew word that they would use to describe men of that are valiant men men of great strength It's the same word that they would use for these men who were going to fight battles in the Old Testament that were full of might and full of power and full of ability. That same Hebrew word is the same word they use virtuous when she spoke about the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31. It wasn't just the woman who sat around and knitted stuff for her family and put food in the middle of the night, which is all great, and doing all the things we just read. She's a woman of strength and ability, and of might, and of power. This wasn't a pitiful woman just being pitiful and blown whichever the way the wind goes and doesn't know if she can get up and do what she needs to do. This was a strong, mighty, powerful woman that the king's mother was telling him about. That's what a woman of virtue is. That's what a woman of strength and dignity is. A virtuous woman is one who has great strength. But the the secret to her strength is not because of her own strength. It's because the strength of God lives in her. Because the people have different personalities. People have different makeups. Women have different. And some of us are stronger. Some of us may, you may not have a strong makeup. You don't think you do. That's what the enemy would try to tell you. And again, don't miss tomorrow morning. Because I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about the strategies of the enemy that comes against you to try to keep you from being a woman of dignity. The lies of the enemy. Because there really is an enemy of our soul, and he really does speak lies to our, to our minds. And it's not our own strength. A, a virtuous woman, a woman of strength and dignity, isn't a woman who walks around in her own strength. Because as humans, we only can go so far and we can only do so much. Even the strongest of us. But it's when the strength of God, the strength and power of the Holy Spirit begins to work in and through us. That's a woman of virtue. That's a woman of strength and dignity, recognizing that it's God's power in us. Women of virtue, women of dignity know how to reach inside of ourselves and find the God's strength to overcome whatever may be said in front of us. And girls, I mentioned what this last year has been. If there ever was a time, if there ever was a time in history, and I'm not being dramatic when I say that, if there ever was a time in history that we as women of God should rise up with the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life, the time is now. People are hurting out there. Do you know that? People are questioning everything. Things are happening that we have not seen happen in our lifetime before. And you don't have to know God to know that something is up. You don't have to walk intimately with God and not know something is going on. There's there's something bigger happening than what we're seeing on our television screens. 
There's something bigger than happening than what you're hearing from your friends and family. There is something God is orchestrating. God's not causing this per se, but he's certainly using this to bring his glory and honor to a world and to a nation that desperately, desperately needs him. And if there was ever a time that that we needed to have women of strength and dignity rise up and walk in the God-given strength that he's given us, it's now. It's now. Because just like in Proverbs 31, others are going to see that and go, what do you have that I don't have? What's in you that can let you walk through what you're walking through with your head held high and your shoulders back? What is the hope that you have? The song that we sang tonight, Jesus Christ, my living hope. He is the hope of the world. He is the hope to the ones who are lost in this dark and dying world. And because of the strength that God's put in us to walk it out before the world, they're going to look at us and go, what is it in you? And you can look at them as a woman of strength and dignity and go it is Jesus Christ my living hope he is the only answer we cannot get through we cannot get through what's ahead of us if we don't reach down on the inside of us and pull something out and go God you your strength has to sustain me because I don't know what the days ahead look like are y'all hearing me A woman of virtue. This is not a pitiful. Count down. I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know. No, no, no. This is a woman that goes, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And others are going to take notice of it. Because people are desperate for an answer. Our world, our nation is desperate for for, for an answer. As I've gotten older, I've learned this. And those of you who are seasoned here in the house, this, I think I said this last year to y'all. I think I said this last year if y'all were here. First of all, I love the Cowboy Fellowship, just FYI. <laughs> love y'all. And I told y'all last year, if I lived here, I would be going to church here. Love y'all. But what impressed me so much last year, and I think I told y'all this, was how how much the generations are represented here. We've got young girls. We've got seasoned girls. We've got everybody in between. That's the sign of a healthy, vibrant church is when all the generations are represented. So y'all can be very, very proud of y'all. Whatever y'all are doing here, you're doing right because God is representing everybody in here. But this is one of the things. As I ooze over and over to a more seasoned life, One thing that I've noticed and I, as I look back, because we can always see God clearer when we look back than we see him looking forward. Is that true? But there's a generation that's coming behind us, and I'm not bashing on y'all. Young girls, and I t- I'm thrilled y'all are here. Y'all need to hear this. Because God's going to use you in this. But as I look back and I see some of these younger generations coming behind me, Not just with what 2020 was, just with life in general, but certainly with what 2020 was. I see a generation, and I know I'm broad brushing because it's not everybody, I know that. But generally speaking, I see a generation of young women coming behind that so many of them do not believe they have what it takes to do what has been put before them. And there's all the reasons why. Because they were raised by a generation of parents who wanted to give their kids more than what we had. And so in doing so, oftentimes you go overboard and you overindulge them. And then you raise a generation of young people who doesn't know what the strength looks like. And doesn't know that they really do have what it takes. And so it concerns me when I look back and go, we've got to speak this message to this generation because this generation has the strength of God in them. God is not, God is not a certain strength for us and a less, certain, a, less, a less amount of strength for them. It's the same God that's, that we serve that lives in them and they've got to realize, and girls, if you're in here and you're in that young generation, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. 
And there's a strength in you that this generation of young girls coming behind us is desperately looking for. It's desperately, desperately looking for. Go back to Proverbs 31, and there's three verses that I'm going to pull out. I'm actually going to read four. There's three things that I'm going to pull out. And I'm reading this out of the uh, New American Standard Version. The wording's a little bit different than what I read earlier. Starting in verse 25, it says this. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She smiles at the future. She opens her mouth in wisdom. And the teaching or the law of kindness is on her tongue. She looks and watches well over the way of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her and her husband also, he praises her. We love that last verse of 28. When our kids aggravate the devil out of us, that's the verse we quote. My children will rise up and call me blessed. And you better do it right now. And then we get aggravated with the old husband. Psalms 31, 28 says that my husband will admire and praise me. Okay, we can quote verse 28. But there's some prerequisites that go before 28 that we have to walk in to get us to that verse 28. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. So tonight, three things, and I'm going to go through them quickly. Becoming a woman of dignity. Becoming a woman of dignity. Number one is this. Clothe yourself with strength and dignity. It's what your t-shirts say. <laughs> Clothe yourself with strength and dignity. I find it uh, uh, amusing. I find it actually awesome. That the Bible uses the word clothe. Yourself. Clothe yourself. He doesn't say that God's going to split heaven open, a dove's going to fly, Jesus is going to come, Holy Spirit's going to hold your hand, and He's going to put He's going to put strength and dignity on you. The Word of God says that we are to clothe ourselves with strength and dignity. Our clothing is the very first thing people see when we walk into the room. Women love clothes. Don't tell me otherwise. There may be a few exceptions. But for the most part, don't we? We've got to clean our closets out like ten times a year. Just go, okay. How many of y'all cleaned your closet out during the COVID shutdown? Thank you very much. There we go. How many of y'all... Wore sweatpants and t-shirts for 10 months and go, am I ever going to wear any of this ever again? And then when you need to put on real clothes, you hate it. We griped about the shutdown. We griped about the quarantine. We griped about it. And then when things started opening back up down here in the South, and thank God uh, for the South, yeah. that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Not going to say anything else. <laughs> Not going to say anything else. So we all want things to get back to normal, and though I know they're not quite back to normal, but then we got to go back to real clothes and real shoes and go, dang, how did I ever wear this all day long? Because we were in our jammies. And then we did our Zoom calls. Y'all got real smart on your Zoom calls, didn't you? I didn't know what Zoom meant before last year. I never heard of Zoom. I didn't know what it was. So Elizabeth, precious Elizabeth, is going to come set us up. And we live out in the country on acreage. And I think I told you all that last year. And cows and all that kind of good stuff. So, And our internet is horrific, like the worst ever. Because we live so far out. So it's just, you know, it's a roll of the dice if it's going to work or not. So these Zoom calls going, okay, I may not be smart, but I've got enough sense to know that Zoom call, all it's going to show me is from the shoulders up. <laughs> and if I've got flannel pajama bottoms on and my uh, house slippers on, more power to myself because nobody's going to know that. Unless I'm an idiot and get up and walk away and let them see me. <laughs> I figured out real quick how to use the old Zoom thing. But women love clothes. 
Women love clothes. In fact, I walked in here and I got on the stage. And if you were honest, you probably gave me the once over. Oh, really? Don't lie. It's okay. But okay, now what is she wearing? Okay, well, what is okay, she's a little, okay, she should be wearing jeans. She shouldn't be wearing that. She should be wearing cowboy boots. I've got cowboy boots. I just didn't pull them out for tonight. You're looking at my hair and you're going, is that real? Is that like real? Is that natural? I mean, yes and yes. Let's just put everybody out of their misery. Clothing's the first thing people see, and especially for women. So the Bible says that we're to clothe ourselves. Not a, nobody else. My husband, my pastor, my leader, my small group leader, my women's ministry leader. doesn't say that. That we can't expect anybody else to clothe us. We have got to clothe ourselves, and it gives us two things to clothe ourselves with. Strength and dignity. That's our responsibility. What do others see when they look at you? Do they see strength and dignity? When you walk into a room, when you walk into your work, when you get on your Zoom call, when you get with your kids' friends and soccer and rodeo and all the stuff that happens, do they see strength and dignity when they look at you or they look at me? Or do they see the insecurity? Or do they see the unforgiveness? Or do they see the hurt? Or the wounds? Or the pain that you carry? What is it that people see when they first look at you? And I'm not talking about the exterior. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Is strength and dignity two words that people in your world would use to describe you? If not, what do you need to do to change that? If not, or if you're not sure, what do you need to do to make sure that you're clothing yourself with strength and dignity? Whatever you carry inwardly is what you're clothed with outwardly. Whatever that inner person is, whatever that is in your heart, whatever you are inwardly, whether you like it or not, and you can try to cover it up all you want to, it's going to come out. Whatever you are inwardly is what is going to come out and what you're going to be clothed with outwardly. Let me give you some definitions. It's very simple. Strength. Strength simply means power. Strength means power. God's power in us. That's what this word strength means. Power. God's power in us. Dignity means self-respect. To hold yourself in high esteem, in honor, in value, and in admiration. Self-respect. To hold yourself in high esteem, honor, value, and admiration. Now, can I be honest with y'all? Because I'm going to anyway, but let, just to be nice. Can I, can I be honest with y'all? Sometimes it's a lot easier to carry that strength than it is to carry the dignity. Because I know women. Women can be strong. I'm a strong woman. And most of the time you're strong because you've had to be strong because of what you've walked through. And the road you've walked has developed a strength to make you strong because you wouldn't have made it had you not been strong. Sometimes strength isn't the issue. With most women, dignity is the issue. It's the self-respect that we have for ourselves. It's the self-respect. It's the high esteem. It's the honor. It's the value. It's the admiration that we put on ourselves. And just hearing that, it makes you uncomfortable. Okay, no, no, no I, I can't think. No, no. I don't want to be prideful. Okay, this has nothing to do with being proud. This has, to be, this has to do with being a woman of dignity. And as women, we will honor and esteem and value everybody else in our life. But when it comes to us, it's so hard to have that dignity and that self-respect 
that we deserve and that God has given us. A woman of dignity. We can handle the strength. It's the dignity that's hard. Self-respect for yourself. The honor and the value for yourself. We cannot expect others to see dignity in us until we can first see dignity in ourselves. And this is what happens in our life. We put the expectation, we want everybody else to clothe us with dignity. We want our husbands and our children or our boyfriend or our family member or our girlfriend. We want everybody else to respect us, to honor us, to value us. God's word doesn't say for everybody else to clothe you with dignity. It says that we're to clothe ourselves with dignity. We cannot put that expectation on someone else when we're not willing to do it ourselves. Clothe yourself with strength and dignity. So Proverbs 31, 25, what I just read, God gives us our responsibility. This is the way God works with his promises. Throughout the whole Bible, there's promises that are there. But there's always an action step on our part. So in this particular verse, God gives us our responsibility. Clothe ourselves with strength and dignity. And then the second part of that verse says, then we'll be able to smile at the future. If we are women who are clothed in strength and dignity, then we'll be able to smile at the future. And again, I'm not going to rehash it again, but if there was ever a time that there was a group and an army of women that God could write, could raise up, that could smile at the future. Listen to me. There's not too many people smiling at the future. I don't know if you knew that or not. Not too many people are looking at the future and going, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to get there. The future is going to be awesome. Most people are scared to death. Most people are so fearful of what's ahead. But a woman of strength and dignity, if she clothes herself in strength and dignity, then you can walk out of here and go, I don't care what's ahead of me and what uncertainty there is. God's word says that I can smile at the future because I'm going to clothe myself with strength and dignity. Does that make sense? Number two is this. Number two is this. Open your mouth with wisdom. This is a whole message that I'm not going to spend a whole message on. You can only imagine where I'm going with this. Only imagine. Number two, how to be a woman of dignity. Number two, open your mouth with wisdom. When Proverbs tells us that she opens her mouth with wisdom, it implies to us that her mouth is not always open. (laughs) Is that true? She opens her mouth with wisdom, meaning her mouth is not always open. A woman of of dignity chooses to open her mouth. And when she chooses to open her mouth, she speaks with wisdom. I'm going to step on every toe that's here tonight, including my own. Because we are the world's worst, aren't we? We're going to open our mouth and whatever we're thinking, it's coming flying out, like it or not. God help whoever is on the other end of this. A woman of strength and dignity opens her mouth with wisdom. A woman of strength and dignity, we are to be women who use wisdom in what we do speak and what we don't speak. There's as much wisdom in what comes out of our mouth and as what we keep our mouths closed and we don't say. We don't have to say everything that comes to our minds. Do we know that? We don't, have to, we don't have to say everything that we think. It doesn't have to come out of our mouths. And all we hear in the day that we live, in the age that we live now, from TV to social media to all the stuff, whatever anybody's thinking, it's flying out. A woman of strength and dignity opens her mouth, and when she opens it, she speaks in wisdom. She knows when to speak and when not to speak. And everything that comes flying in our heads don't, doesn't have to come out of our mouth. That's wisdom. Let me give you some verses. Just jot these down real quickly. Proverbs 31, 26, what I just read. In the message says this. When she speaks, implying that she's not always speaking. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. 
James 3, 2 says those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. Mm. Proverbs 9, 13 says the foolish woman is loud, undisciplined, and lacks knowledge. Mm. The foolish woman is loud, undisciplined, and lacks knowledge because her mouth is always open and here we go. God gives us the responsibility, women of dignity. We are to open our mouth with wisdom. Then comes the promise, the second part of that verse, the law of kindness is on her tongue. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and when she does, the law of kindness is on her tongue. Kindness will come out of a wise woman's mouth. Do I have to tell you how desperately our world needs kindness? Do I have to tell you how much it means to people when a kind word comes out of our mouth? When all we're hearing is the negative and the horrible and the bad and the terrible and everything is swirling around us, do I have to tell you how much weight kind words today carry? A woman of strength and dignity will open her mouth with wisdom. And when she does open it, the words of kindness are going to come out. We have control, girls. I'm telling you, I'm stepping on my toes too. There is not a puppet. There's not a ventriloquist with a hand up my back and making my mouth flap and making words fly out of me. I'm not a puppet on a string that has no control of what I say. I've said things that I shouldn't have said and let things fly out of my mouth that I shouldn't have let fly out. But this is what I've learned the older I've gotten and the longer I've walked with God. When I cannot lead by example, I lead by repentance. If I cannot lead by example and I blow it and I say something wrong or I say something stupid and kindness isn't flying out my mouth, I allow the Holy Spirit to bring conviction to me and I go back and repent to whoever those words just came flying out on. And this is what happens. Most of the time, we can hold our tongue around people outside of our home. But something happens when we walk inside of our home. It's like all the guards let down and we just let it fly. And the people that are in our home, sadly, are usually the recipients of our careless words. When you cannot lead by example, lead by repentance. Go back and apologize to those kids. Go back and apologize to your husband. Go back and apologize to family members that you may have just unleashed on. In a moment of weakness, a woman of strength and dignity controls what she says and uses her mouth for wisdom, not for harm. We've all done it. I'm not pointing the finger at you. I'm pointing it at me too because I've had to do it and continue to do it. But going, God, please help me next time. Help me learn when to open my mouth and help me learn when to keep it shut. That's a woman of strength and dignity. Number three is this, and I'm closing. Number three, how to be a woman of dignity. Watch well over the ways of your household. Watch well over the ways of your household. There's many types of households that's represented here. Some, some of you are single mamas with children in your home. Some of you are married with a husband and no children. Some of you are married with a husband and a hundred children and go, how did this happen? And then you're, you're, you, some of you are grandmas and grandpas and, or, or some of you are empty nesters and your kids are out or some of you are college students and, and you have a dorm room or an apartment. There's so many different households represented here. The, the word household doesn't just speak to the people within our homes, it also speaks to the people within our world. Our own sphere of influence, our own world that we live in, that's the people of our household, the people that God's placed in your life. That's your household, the people that God's divinely put in your life, meaning family members and some that are not family as women, of, as women of dignity, we are to watch over the people that God's placed in our life. Women have this awesome gift called intuition. And everybody else in the world would never believe we have it, but us in this room, we know we have it. And you, you, your family member can walk into your home, a child, a husband, and without them saying a word, you know something's not right. 
a parent, an elderly parent, a family member, a co-worker, a friend. You, you can tell by looking at them something's not right. They don't have to say a word. There's something God's put in us for us to nurture because that's who we are, for us to nurture and to watch well over our households. That's what a woman of strength and dignity does. She recognizes when someone isn't good. She recognizes when someone needs attention. Watching well means to be diligent and pay attention to those around us and do what we can say or do to help encourage them. We're to be women who watch well over the people God's placed in our sphere of influence. To be an encouragement to them. To be a prayer warrior for them. To speak hope and encouragement to them. To pay attention to what's going on in the people's lives that God's put in our life. And again, God gives us our responsibility. If we'll watch well over our households, then the second part of that verse says, we will not eat the bread of idleness. If we're busy about our business and we're busy about our God-given assignment as women of strength and dignity, we're going to watch well over the people that are in our life and we're going to pay attention and be diligent about how we can be a blessing and encourage and speak life over them. We're not going to have time to be idle. This is a quick definition of idle and it says this, not working or active, doing nothing. Habitually doing nothing or avoiding work, no purpose. If you're busy watching well and you're busy tending to the people in your life and being God's blessing to them, we're not going to have time to be idle and do nothing. And let me say this to the mamas that are in this room, and this is another lesson for another day. Don't let your children be idle. Don't let your teenagers be idle. Don't let that start being, that seed being planted in them to where they feel like that's okay. You don't want your kids walking through life, teenagers, college students, whatever age they are, with no purpose. There's some God-given assignments that are very clear in His Word. Don't let your household be a household of being idle. So how can I become a woman of strength and dignity, clothed, Yourself with strength and dignity. Open your mouth with wisdom and watch well over your household and your world. All of those are action steps on our end. And then after those three verses, then we hit Proverbs 28. And it says, her children will rise and bless her and her husband will also praise her. That's a promise that every single one of us want. We want our family to bless and to honor and to love us. But God gives us some steps ahead of time to go, this is what you do as a woman of dignity. And if you do your part, I promise you, your family, your children, and your husband are going to take note of that. And they will at one point or another rise and call you blessed because you walk with strength and dignity. Amen? Does that make good sense? Bow your heads and let me pray for you tonight, girls. Father, I thank you for this time together. Father, I thank you, God, for the, uh, your word and the truth of your word. And Jesus, I pray over every woman that's in this room, regardless of her age, her circumstance, what her home looks like, what her sphere of influence looks like. Father, I pray you would come. And Holy Spirit, you know the areas that you want to touch in her heart. Of all the things that I talked about tonight, Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come and bring conviction We're necessary. Conviction never pulls us away from you. Conviction always draws us close to your heart. Father, there's some things that we may need to repent of. There's some words that we may need to repent of when we leave here. But Father, I pray that you would raise up a group of women right here at Cowboy Fellowship, God. That you would raise up this group of women to walk out of here, God, with strength and dignity as her clothing. That, God, she would shine brightly in a world that so desperately needs you. That she would be the answer that this world is asking and crying out for. That, God, you would use these women as a catalyst to speak hope and life and encouragement over people in this world that desperately need it. Father, touch these women's hearts tonight, Father. Seal this word in their heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heidi. Let's thank her.